Deborah Herzman is a former chair of the NTSB and is president and CEO of the National Safety Council. She's with me from Chicago. Deborah, we've seen conflicting reports all day about the discovery of wreckage. Why is there this confusion in the investigation and is it concerning? You know, it is concerning because one of the things we've learned from Air France 447, Malaysia 370, and now this event is that we have got to have a better system for locating aircraft in real time so we can do that search and recovery or search and rescue if there are survivors. We know that technology exists to do this, and in, in fact, they've been looking at trying to update this for several years. Uh, break this down for us. What are the next steps in the search process? So the first 24 hours was really focused on search and rescue or recovery, trying to really nail down all the perishable evidence, things that could erode over time. You want to make sure you know the people you want to talk to, and you want to do that fairly quickly because people's uh, memories uh, you know, will, will change, and so you don't want them to be exposed to too much news or information. You want to be able to talk to them. Egypt Air has had some high-profile incidents in the past. In March, a hijacker with fake explosive forced an Egypt Air flight to be diverted. An Egypt Air flight in 1999 from New York to Cairo crashed off the U.S. coast, and Americans suspected the first officer deliberately crashed it. Do the airline's previous security incidents factor into the investigation? You know, they will absolutely be looking at everything, uh, certainly on the safety side. Uh, their performance, and also the security side. And so anytime you open an investigation, you're always going to look at past uh, experiences. And that'll be important to see whether lessons were learned and whether processes and procedures were put into place to prevent that prior event from reoccurring. There was also the Russian jetliner in mid-October that broke up over the Sinai Peninsula. An ISIS affiliate says it blew up that plane. Is there special scrutiny just because of the location? Certainly this uh, event occurred in a part of the world to an aircraft that had been uh, in multiple countries where they're going to be paying close attention to what was going on at the airport. And so there is heightened interest. There's been a lot of discussion of terrorism. But at this point, it is speculation. The publicly released information doesn't provide any evidence that that's the case. There may be information that they haven't released or that intelligence community has. But at this point, there is very little to go on. And so it's really too early to say whether it was an accident or whether it was a terrorist event. Deborah Herzman, thank you so much. Thank you.